हे गाइस वेलकम टू माय वीडियो टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑब्लिक एलिप्स बाय दिस टाइम वी हैव ऑलरेडी मास्टर्ड ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट्स अप्लाइड ऑन स्टैंडर्ड इक्वेशन ऑफ एन एलिप्स द सेम थिंग नाउ नाउ दैट विल बी अप्लाइड ऑन ऑब्लिक एलिप्स स्टे ट्यून विद मी टिल द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो एंड इफ यू फाइंड द कंटेंट इज यूजफुल टू यू प्लीज हिट द लाइक बटन एंड शेयर इट विद योर फ्रेंड्स आई लुक फॉरवर्ड टू कैच अप विद यू ऑन माय नेक्स्ट वीडियो आल्सो सो लेट्स गेट इनटू द टॉपिक So we are already familiar with the standard equation of an ellipse. Uh, x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to one, where the axes are coordinate axes here. All the terms related to it, uh, we already know how to find them, like focus, directrix, uh, major axis, minor axis, vertices, and all. So now I'm going to discuss about oblique ellipse. when we are given with a second degree equation uh like ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0 it represents an ellipse based on certain condition in that uh, initial condition is uh, delta should not be 0 and h square should be lesser than ab So where delta is equal to a condition like a b c plus two f g h uh, minus b g square minus c h square minus a f square, other way of putting this condition in the determinant form also we are aware of a h g h b f g f c. If this is not equal to zero. Then uh, and uh, and simultaneously h square is less than a b. Then uh, the above equation will represent ellipse. So with all these terms, it will represent an oblique ellipse. So right now we are going to discuss about oblique ellipse and how to find the terms related to that ellipse. So the terms related here basically what we are going to discuss is. uh what is uh, major axis length for an oblique ellipse what is a major axis length and what is a minor axis length so in order to find out uh, all the terms not only these two uh, all the terms uh, of an oblique ellipse initially uh, we need to find out the center of the ellipse center uh, how do we find out for an oblique ellipse so it is using partial differentiation then after we find out the center the second step what we are going to do is the distance from center to any point center to any point should be maximized should be maximized to get a uh, major axis length and the same distance if it is minimized we get the minor axis length minimized to get minor axis length so basically we are uh, we will be following uh, these uh, steps so let's let me show you with an example here and i will apply the same steps over there and i will show you how to find out the required terms so let's see an example here so i will take a second degree equation which is uh, 21x square minus 6xy plus 29y square plus 6x minus 58y minus 151 is equal to 0 so 
this is a second degree equation. We can also verify the condition that h squared is less than AB here because the product of AB is 21 into 29 and h squared is uh, 9 here. So obviously 9 will be lesser than 21 into 29. So it, and also we can verify the condition that delta is not equal to zero. So hence it represents an ellipse. So these are the initial conditions to identify whether this given second degree equation is an ellipse or not. And after that, as I told you, first we need to use a partial differentiation here. Let me draw the uh, ellipse here. After finding the center, so let us go with the first step of finding the center. So partially differentiate this equation with respect to x. Differentiate with respect to x, keeping y as constant. So we get one equation. So let us write down that equation. Forty-two x minus six y plus six is equal to zero, which further simplify it to write it as seven x minus y plus one is equal to zero. So this is the first equation, and. Uh, now let's say differentiate the same thing with respect to y, keeping x as constant. So what is the equation I'm going to get here? Minus 6x plus 58y minus 58. So once we get this equation, we can further simplify this and write it as 3x minus 29y plus 29 is equal to 0. This is the second equation. Now solving 1 and 2 gives you the center as we get center as 0 comma 1. So after we get the center, so we, we knew that the center is going to lie on uh, y-axis here, which is uh, 0 comma 1 means. So let's draw an ellipse here. Oblique ellipse again. Having the center at This is an approximate figure I have drawn. It's center at uh, 0, 1. Let's say this point. Now, after this, I said to find out a uh, distance of the point from center to uh, or center to a point on uh, ellipse, and that should be maximized to get the major axis length. Let's say I'm taking some point on the ellipse and join this to center. And the angle made by the extended line with x axis is b theta. So, using parametric form of the equations of line, if this distance is r, we can write down the point p as r cos theta comma 1 plus r sin theta, which lies on ellipse. So upon substituting uh, this point P on ellipse, we will be able to express uh, r in terms of theta. So let us put it in this expression. This is 21 r square cos square theta minus 
six r cos theta into one plus r sin theta plus twenty nine into one plus r sin theta whole square plus six into r cos theta minus fifty eight into one plus r sin theta minus one fifty one is zero. Although it's a lengthy expression, but uh, you can have your own way to. Simplify it further, and uh, the final step. What I'm going to get after simplification is r square is equal to one eighty divided by twenty five minus four cos two theta and three sine two theta. Uh, so after simplifying the previous expression, you will arrive to this. So R square maximum, you will get it when the denominator is minimum, and the denominator is minimum. We uh, where for what value of theta? Let's say we know that three sine two theta in trigonometry plus four cos two theta will always lie between minus five and plus five. So since the expression is with negative sign here, we have to choose the maximum value of this expression. For the denominator to be minimum, so we'll plug in as minus five here. So we'll get plus five. Maximum value of that maximum value we have to subtract it so that the minimum denominator becomes the minimum. So in this case, it's one eighty by twenty. So finally, we get nine. So our maximum is nothing but semi-major axis length. Which in this case is three. So similarly, r square minimum when I want to find the denominator should be maximum. So when does the denominator becomes maximum? When I substitute minus five in the place of four cos two theta plus three sine two theta. So in this case, it's one eighty divided by thirty, which is six. So r minimum basically gives us. semi minor axis length which is in this case root 6 so this is a concept by which we will be able to find out the major axis and minor axis lengths and uh, while finding uh, the major axis we will be also identifying for what value of theta the denominator becomes plus 5 here so with that theta even we'll be able to write down the major axis and minor axis equations also so uh, uh, on this like in case if the question is further extended to find out the uh, director circle uh, radius of the cell it's director circle radius of the cell it's because we already know uh, the major axis length is 2 3 here so director circle radius will be root 2 times that a here so which is going to be 3 root 2 so the more questions can be added once we are able to derive certain things related to oblique ellipses here i guess the process is uh, clear to everyone you can try taking up uh, different second degree equations uh, which represents ellipses in order to find out the major and minor axis length